Oh. <laughs> I'm not turning that off. Okay. Anymore. Okay. I'm just gonna no, edit things out. I know all these things come come through. I was I was just saying that as we were talking about safety and and I was kind of scared about some of the things that Ari was doing last week with him desiring to work with tools. And I was like, just coming at it from like a place of more lightness and uh, curiosity really of, oh, how could you do that? It's making me feel better as a mom. Cause I was just like, so I felt like all I was doing was yelling at my kid, mm -hmm. you know? And um, I just, I appreciate that it could be that it can be light. And so I'm hoping that as the more that I use this like umbrella of joy, <laughs> it's like, that'll just become second nature. Yeah. And it feels silly even saying that. Cause I'm, I feel like I'm a pretty joyful person, but yet the, the daily grind, it does get lost. Notice you know? how when you, 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 in the past, when you think of yourself, look, oh, I was such a joyful person. Notice the stress behind that. Yeah. There's tension around your joy. And when you switch to silliness, lightness, the tension goes away. Yeah. Yeah, it's, yes, absolutely. Absolutely. We think we're as joyful when we're like peppy and happy with our kids. We're upbeat. But there's this background tension of, I hope it goes well. Let's, oh, don't, you know, what if he does this? Da, 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 da. And if you just really switch to nothing serious is going on here. Right. It's just all life and learning. And when it's right. light, you don't have that tension. And then do, I mean, so does it, if, yeah. And so then as a parent, you can then hopefully start to navigate the harder, more serious events that inevitably will come up with it's, it. Yeah. But you're, you're coming into it, expecting mistakes to be made and sure. embracing the fact that mistakes are going to be made. Sure. Because that's about learning. It's, we have this perfectionism in our society where people can't be human. And that's where the tension is like, oh, it has to be perfect. It has to be perfect. But <laughs> No, Ari's going to make mistakes and we're going to learn from those mistakes and it's going to be fun. Yeah. Yeah. So then the hope is that then when those mistakes or more serious things come up, it's not, it doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be learned through anger or frustration. Right. It's not the or... end of the world. It's part of the process. It's part of growing. Yeah. And you're going to make mistakes. Yes. And that's also no big deal. Right. You can apologize and you can make amends and you can bring it back. Yeah. So when we don't think it's going to be perfect, we think it's going to be full of learning, you know? Yeah. And people can just relax and live. Yep. I love that. Relax and live. <laughs> Let's do that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let's do that. Cool. Okay. Does it make, does, I mean, is there, is, is there a, is there a downside to, um, is there a downside? So say, for example, Ari, I've been I was, per I'm perfect. Let's just say, for example, I'm perfect. And I'm always light and airy and the mistakes we learn are perfectly modeled. And mm -hmm. then he goes to school and he gets interaction with people who aren't light and airy and the seriousness is more, and it's a little less comforting and joyful than it is at home. Right. This is the big fear of can a child be bicultural and deal with what the hard things at school, if everything's light and happy at home. And the answer is a hundred percent more. They can mm. deal with that. 
If you okay. try to prepare them for adversity at home by creating adversity, adversity, you just keep them in stress and they are less prepared to deal with adversity. If you give mm -hmm. them joy, that's you, they're going to have more resilience for dealing with the adversity at school. Joy creates this ability to have resilience. So when he he's up against some dour, punitive teacher, but he's had this history of joy behind him, he's going to meet it with much more confidence, much more self-possession. Mm. And he's not going to see that's right and I'm wrong because that if it's a, if he's always getting that at home, he's going to see that as that's right and I'm wrong for mm, right. being unhappy with this. Right. But if he has had all this rightness at home of joy, he goes there and he says, oh, this is a problem. Uh, that's not right. This is right. 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 Or he has more ability to reflect and be like, that doesn't feel right. And right. he doesn't take it personally. He's not like wounded by it. Yeah. Right. Sure. That, that makes a lot the, of The way that we, you know, handled it in with slavery was I'm going to hurt my child so that they are beaten into submission so that when they get to the master, they'll be safe because they'll mm. know how to be submissive. Mm. so you could take that approach if you want him to be submissive at school <laughs> right no. you could take that approach um or you can show him who he is you can show him that he is the light of your life so that when he goes to school and he sees this he will see it as an injustice and work through it that way and some oh. kids are very patient with teachers who are punitive and in a bad mood because they've had all this joy at home and they, they come to school and they're like, I can see that that person is not doing well and they mm -hmm. can tolerate it. And some kids are not so uh, forgiving mm -hmm. and you can either train him to be forgiving or teach him to be forgiving you can mm -hmm. talk to him about yeah that she's probably not having a good day and she's probably not having a good life and this is probably really hard for her to be in this class with all these kids and she she's not prepared for these challenges you can talk with him about being compassionate but you can also talk with him about well how can you um protect yourself or how can you defend yourself what can we say to her in a way that would be respectful, but also stand up for what you need? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, he can get all those wonderful skills so that when he becomes an adult, that's just, he's already been there, done that. So he gets a that's boss cool. that's disrespectful to him and he knows how to talk to that boss. Yeah. I think that's great how like, you know, cause there's so many different parts of the resilience factor and like the challenge and like all of that. And it's so great to see how, what you just said, you know, how this one piece of joy, how it can lead to resilience Yeah, and like what that means, you know, just in this case, that's just, I think that's, I think it's nice because resilience can mean so many different things in our lives. So, yeah. That's great. Yeah. That is really great. It's like, if you really choose to, to work in this framework, I mean, I'm not saying anything you don't know, but you can, you can solve, you can work through all of it. There's an, it's there's a way. Good. Yeah. It's all good there's fodder. Yeah. Wow. Mm-hmm. Feels good. Cool. Well, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Cool, cool, cool. I think I feel I feel complete now. I'm not gonna say yeah. anything else. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I'm scared to turn it off, so I'm just gonna. <laughs> well, I know, I know, I know, I know. Well, I, I, when I swear, I have a list of things a million long when Ari is in school and I have the time, I'm going to do some more videos just like on this, you know? So like, 
and give more examples and talk about how it's working for me. And um, because it's not overwhelming when you just focus on one thing. Yeah. Yeah. And if joy is the one, Mm -hmm. it's fun for everyone. (laughs) And a lot of skills come out of joy. So as you are focusing on that one thing of joy, you find so many more solutions to problems that just kind of roll out because you're not in a threat response. You're in a green place and that green engenders a great ideas of how to solve problems. Yeah, there's a lot more collaboration and openness. Mm-hmm. And creativity. Yeah. Yeah. For what will work. Yeah. And it also just um it also just feels good coming from that place to really also remember to validate and just like say yes more even mm-hmm. to the silly things that are wrong. Mm-hmm. You know, like oh yeah, I can see that, you know, cause I just, he lights up the second you validate him, anyone, it's like, yeah, yeah. Like, so can you think of an example of something that would be wrong that you were validating? Oh, I mean, like, I don't mean wrong in like a life or death situation, obviously, but like no. this morning we were talking about um, I don't even know. He was talking about some bucket truck on the, on the freeway. And he made up, he said something that literally made no sense. Uh-huh. Like in his mind, he's trying to put together some more complex things, but like he said, Oh, I think the bucket truck's going to, uh, I, I can't honestly yeah. remember what he said, but it was like yeah. nonsense. And I was right. like, Oh yeah, I bet that sounds amazing. Yeah. You know, I mean, so that was just an example of me. Instead, I could have been like, no, bud, you know, that doesn't make sense. And so I also can, I'm also constantly in my head thinking like, well, I don't want to give him false information, but do I need to tell him in this moment that what he said doesn't make any sense? Yeah. No. Or you can, you can also say, oh, that's an interesting idea so that you're not agreeing with him, but. Or something like granting and fantasy where you say that would be cool. If it would be, that would be neat. If that were true, (laughs) my kids will say, I'm going to Australia next year. And the, instead of saying, "Uh, no, we're not going to Australia, honey. You can say, Ooh, Australia. That would be so cool. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. All right. I like I, that. Okay. That's, that's cool. And so what did you call that? What did Granting you say? Granting in fantasy. Granting in fantasy. All right. Oh, that's, I like that. And then that comes from where you would say, you know, this came from, um, it's called star parenting and you would, a child might want something like, I want to have ice cream right now and it's almost dinner and you grin in fantasy by saying mmm that sounds delicious ooh would you want five scoops how many scoops would you want and what flavors and just talk about it yeah enjoy it <laughs> instead of no and <laughs> right and so i'm sure this work this does that work in all sorts of like green situations but also in sort in in more stressful um high stakes life like like what if a kid is um exhibiting um severe anxiety like i think someone's i think that car is following us Mm. yeah i i suggest that where you say, ooh, who do you think is following us? Who might mm-hmm. be in there? What do they want? To really flush out the fear, mm-hmm. get all the details down. Mm-hmm. And then what I call the, I call this um, following it to its conclusion. 
mm-hmm. so that you can get an ending to the story. Mm-hmm. So then what, ha- then what could happen? And then what could happen? And so when you get to the end, maybe the police would come, you know, they come up with some resolution when you keep following it to its conclusion. And then the fear is gone because now it's had a solution in its head in the person's mm. head and it's adults can do it too. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's and then you can get to death. Sometimes you get to death and then it's, and then what happens? Where do you go? And right. Somehow, some way, like you really have them imagine it, get into the scenario, get into the visualization of it, that what happens after you die. And then what happens? Where does your spirit, do you, does your spirit go somewhere? What happens? Somehow, some way you get to something good, peace, heaven, you know, a big release of, uh, oh, or like, yeah, like you said, the police, the police are going to get them. You, you know, you help solve the You case. don't tell them that. Right, right, right. They right. You take it to their conclusion. And then you always say, what happens next? So they come up with the solution. Mm-hmm. So if it's death, and you ask them what happens from with death, you keep on going and going and going until something good happens. And if some rarely something that good does not happen, mm-hmm. and then you can ask the question, well, could this happen? Mm. And could, you know, could, could the police come and save you? Is that a possibility? Mm-hmm. So then you can bring your, their mind to something, but rarely, usually they come up with something good. Mm. that's cool I like that all right cool that's it that is it (laughs) that is it all right